The Vedas, Sanskrit, Veda Veda, knowledge, are a large body of religious texts originating in ancient India. Composed in Vedic Sanskrit, the texts constitute the oldest layer of Sanskrit literature and the oldest scriptures of Hinduism. Hindus consider the Vedas to be aparaseya, which means, not of a man, superhuman, and impersonal, authorless. Vedas are also called sruti, what is heard, literature, distinguishing them from other religious texts, which are called smrta, what is remembered. The Veda, for orthodox Indian theologians, are considered revelations seen by ancient sages after intense meditation, and texts that have been more carefully preserved since ancient times. In the Hindu epic the Mahabharata, the creation of Vedas is credited to Brahma. The Vedic hymns themselves assert that they were skillfully created by rishis sages, after inspired creativity, just as a carpenter builds a chariot. According to tradition, Vyasa is the compiler of the Vedas, who arranged the four kinds of mantras into four samhitas. There are four Vedas, the Rigveda, the Yajurveda, the Samaveda and the Atharvaveda. Each Veda has been subclassified into four major text types, the Samhitas mantras and benedictions, the Aranyakas text on rituals, ceremonies, sacrifices and symbolic sacrifices, the Brahmanas commentaries on rituals, ceremonies and sacrifices, and the Upanishads texts discussing meditation, philosophy and spiritual knowledge. Some scholars add a fifth category, the Upasanas worship. The various Indian philosophies and denominations have taken differing positions on the Vedas. Schools of Indian philosophy which cite the Vedas as their scriptural authority are classified as orthodox. Astaka. Other Sramana traditions, such as Lokayata, Karvaka, Ahivika, Buddhism and Jainism, which did not regard the Vedas as authorities, are referred to as heterodox or non-orthodox Nastika schools. Despite their differences, just like the texts of the Sramana traditions, the layers of texts in the Vedas discuss similar ideas and concepts. Topic. Etymology and usage The Sanskrit word Veda knowledge, wisdom, is derived from the root vid to know". This is reconstructed as being derived from the Proto-Indo-European root asterisk u, ed, meaning see or know. The noun is from Proto-Indo-European asterisk u, eidos, cognate to Greek, it aspect form not to be confused as the homonymous first and third person singular perfect tense veda cognate to greek oida w oida i know root cognates are greek idea english wit etc latin video i see etc the sanskrit term veda as a common noun means knowledge the term in some contexts, such as hymn 10.93.11 of the Rigveda, means, "...obtaining or finding wealth, property", while in some others it means, "...a bunch of grass together", as in a broom or for ritual fire, a related word vadina appears in hymn 8.19.5 of the Rigveda. It was translated by Ralph T. H. Griffith as, ritual lore", as, "...studying the Veda", by the 14th-century Indian scholar Sayana, as, "...bundle of grass", by Max Muller, and as, "...with the Veda", by H. H. Wilson. Vedas are called Mare or Vaimali in parts of South India. Mare literally means, "...hidden, a secret, mystery." But Tamil Nanmarai mentioned in Tholkapiyam isn't Sanskrit Vedas. In some South Indian communities such as Iyengars, the word Veda includes the Tamil writings of the Alvar saints, such as Divya Prabandham, for example Tiruvimoli. Chronology <laughs> <laughs> 
The Vedas are among the oldest sacred texts. The Samhitas date to roughly 1700 to 1100 BCE, and the Circumvedic texts, as well as the redaction of the Samhitas, date to c. 1000 to 500 BCE, resulting in a Vedic period spanning the mid second to mid first millennium BCE, or the Late Bronze Age and the Iron Age. The Vedic period reaches its peak only after the composition of the mantra texts, with the establishment of the various shakas all over northern India which annotated the mantra samhitas with Brahmana discussions of their meaning, and reaches its end in the age of Buddha and Panini and the rise of the Mahajanapadas archaeologically, northern black polished ware. Michael Witzel gives a time span of c. 1500 to c. 500 to 400 BCE. Witzel makes special reference to the Near Eastern Mitanni material of the 14th century BCE, the only epigraphic record of Indo-Aryan contemporary to the Rigvedic period. He gives 150 BCE Patanjali as a terminus anti Quem for all Vedic Sanskrit literature, and 1200 BCE the early Iron Age as terminus post Quem for the Atharvaveda. Transmission of texts in the Vedic period was by oral tradition, preserved with precision with the help of elaborate mnemonic techniques. A literary tradition is traceable in post-Vedic times, after the rise of Buddhism in the Maurya period, perhaps earliest in the Kanva recension of the Yajurveda about the 1st century BCE, however oral tradition of transmission remained active. Witzel suggests the possibility of written Vedic texts towards the end of 1st millennium BCE. Some scholars such as Jack Goody state that the Vedas are not the product of an oral society. Basing this view by comparing inconsistencies in the transmitted versions of literature from various oral societies such as the Greek, Serbia and other cultures, then noting that the Vedic literature is too consistent and vast to have been composed and transmitted orally across generations, without being written down. However, adds Goody, the Vedic texts likely involved both a written and oral tradition, calling it a parallel products of a literate society. Due to the ephemeral nature of the manuscript material, birch bark or palm leaves, surviving manuscripts rarely surpass an age of a few hundred years. The Sampurnanan Sanskrit University has a Rigveda manuscript from the 14th century, however, there are a number of older Veda manuscripts in Nepal that are dated from the 11th century onwards. <laughs> <laughs> Ancient universities The Vedas, Vedic rituals and its ancillary sciences called the Vedangas, were part of the curriculum at ancient universities such as at Taxila, Nalanda and Vikramashila. <coughs> Categories of Vedic texts The term, ''Vedic texts'' is used in two distinct meanings. Texts composed in Vedic Sanskrit during the Vedic period Iron Age India. Any text considered as ''connected to the Vedas'' or a ''corollary of the Vedas'' <inaudible> Vedic Sanskrit corpus The corpus of Vedic Sanskrit texts includes the Samhitas Sanskrit Samhita collection are collections of metric texts mantras there are four vedic samhitas the rig veda sama veda yajur veda and atharva veda most of which are available in several recensions saka in some contexts the term veda is used to refer to these samhitas this is the oldest layer of Vedic texts, apart from the Rigvedic hymns, which were probably essentially complete by 1200 BCE, dating to c. the 12th to 10th centuries BCE. 
The complete corpus of Vedic mantras as collected in Bloomfield's Vedic Concordance 1907 consists of some 89,000 padas metrical feet, of which 72,000 occur in the four Samhitas. The Brahmanas are prose texts that comment and explain the solemn rituals as well as expound on their meaning and many connected themes. Each of the Brahmanas is associated with one of the Samhitas or its recensions. The Brahmanas may either form separate texts or can be partly integrated into the text of the Samhitas. They may also include the Aranyakas and Upanishads. The Aranyakas wilderness texts", or forest treaties", were composed by people who meditated in the woods as recluses and are the third part of the Vedas. The texts contain discussions and interpretations of ceremonies, from ritualistic to symbolic meta-ritualistic points of view. It is frequently read in secondary literature. Older Mukya Upanishads Bridaranyaka, Chandogya, Katha, Kena, Aitareya, and others, the Vedas are different from Vedic-era texts such as Shrauta Sutras and Graha Sutras, which are Smriti texts. Together, the Vedas and these sutras form part of the Vedic Sanskrit corpus, while production of Brahmanas and Aranyakas ceased with the end of the Vedic period. Additional Upanishads were composed after the end of the Vedic period. The Brahmanas, Aranyakas, and Upanishads, among other things, interpret and discuss the Samhitas in philosophical and metaphorical ways to explore abstract concepts such as the Absolute Brahman, and the Soul or the Self. Atman, introducing Vedanta philosophy, one of the major trends of later Hinduism. In other parts, they show evolution of ideas, such as from actual sacrifice to symbolic sacrifice, and of spirituality in the Upanishads. This has inspired later Hindu scholars such as Adi Shankara to classify each Veda into Karma Kanda, Karma Kanda action, ritual related sections, and Jnana Kanda, Jnana Kanda knowledge, spirituality related sections. <laughs> Shruti literature The texts considered Vedic in the sense of «corollaries of the Vedas» is less clearly defined, and may include numerous post-Vedic texts such as the later Upanishads and the Sutra literature. Texts not considered to be Shruti are known as Smriti Sanskrit, Smrta, the remembered, or texts of remembered traditions. This indigenous system of categorization was adopted by Max Muller and, while it is subject to some debate, it is still widely used. As Axel Michaels explains, These classifications are often not tenable for linguistic and formal reasons, there is not only one collection at any one time, but rather several handed down in separate Vedic schools, Upanishads, are sometimes not to be distinguished from Aranyakas. Brahmanas contain older strata of language attributed to the Samhitas. There are various dialects and locally prominent traditions of the Vedic schools. Nevertheless, it is advisable to stick to the division adopted by Max Muller because it follows the Indian tradition, conveys the historical sequence fairly accurately, and underlies the current editions, translations, and monographs on Vedic literature. The Upanishads are largely philosophical works, some in dialogue form. They are the foundation of Hindu philosophical thought and its diverse traditions. Of the Vedic corpus, they alone are widely known, and the central ideas of the Upanishads are at the spiritual core of Hindus. <inaudible> <inaudible> Vedic schools or recensions The four Vedas were transmitted in various sakas branches, schools. Each school likely represented an ancient community of a particular area, or kingdom. Each school followed its own canon. 
Multiple recensions are known for each of the Vedas. Thus, states Witzel as well as Renu, in the second millennium BCE, there was likely no canon of one broadly accepted Vedic texts, no Vedic scripture, but only a canon of various texts accepted by each school. Some of these texts have survived, most lost are yet to be found. Rigveda that survives in modern times, for example, is in only one extremely well-preserved school of Sakalya, from a region called Videha, in modern North Bihar, south of Nepal. The Vedic canon in its entirety consists of texts from all the various Vedic schools taken together. Each of the four Vedas were shared by the numerous schools, but revised, interpolated, and adapted locally, in and after the Vedic period, giving rise to various recensions of the text. Some texts were revised into the modern era, raising significant debate on parts of the text which are believed to have been corrupted at a later date. The Vedas each have an index or anukramani, the principal work of this kind being the general index or sarvanukramani. Prodigious energy was expended by ancient Indian culture in ensuring that these texts were transmitted from generation to generation with inordinate fidelity. For example, memorization of the sacred Vedas included up to eleven forms of recitation of the same text. The texts were subsequently proof read by comparing the different recited versions forms of recitation included the jata patha literally mesh recitation in which every two adjacent words in the text were first recited in their original order then repeated in the reverse order and finally repeated in the original order that these methods have been effective, is testified to by the preservation of the most ancient Indian religious text, the Rigveda, as redacted into a single text during the Brahmana period, without any variant readings within that school. The Vedas were likely written down for the first time around 500 BCE. However, all printed editions of the Vedas that survive in the modern times are likely the version existing in about the 16th century AD. Topic: <laughs> 4 Vedas. The canonical division of the Vedas is fourfold: Turiya viz. Rigveda RV Yajurveda YV with the main division TS versus VS Samaveda SV Atharvaveda AV of these the first 3 were the principal original division also called Trayi Vidya that is the triple science of reciting hymns Rigveda performing sacrifices Yajurveda and chanting songs Samaveda the Rigveda is the oldest work, which Witzel states are probably from the period of 1900 to 1100 BCE. Witzel, also notes that it is the Vedic period itself, where incipient lists divide the Vedic texts into three or four branches, Rig, Yajur, Sama and Atharva. Each Veda has been subclassified into four major text types, the Samhitas mantras and benedictions, the Aranyakas text on rituals, ceremonies such as newborn babies' rites of passage, coming of age, marriages, retirement and cremation, sacrifices and symbolic sacrifices the brahmanas commentaries on rituals ceremonies and sacrifices and the upanishads text discussing meditation philosophy and spiritual knowledge the upasanas short ritual worship related sections are considered by some scholars as the fifth part Witzel notes that the rituals, rites and ceremonies described in these ancient texts reconstruct to a large degree the Indo-European marriage rituals observed in a region spanning the Indian subcontinent, Persia and the European area, and some greater details are found in the Vedic era texts such as the Grhya Sutras. Only one version of the Rigveda is known to have survived into the modern era. Several different versions of the Sama Veda and the Atharva Veda are known, and many different versions of the Yajur Veda have been found in different parts of South Asia. <laughs> 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 
Topic: <inaudible> Rigveda. The Rigveda Samhita is the oldest extant Indic text. It is a collection of 1,028 Vedic Sanskrit hymns and 10,600 verses in all, organized into ten books Sanskrit, mandalas. The hymns are dedicated to Rigvedic deities. The books were composed by poets from different priestly groups over a period of several centuries from roughly the second half of the second millennium BCE, the early Vedic period, starting with the Punjab region of the northwest Indian subcontinent. The Rigveda is structured based on clear principles. The Veda begins with a small book addressed to Agni, Indra, Soma, and other gods, all arranged according to decreasing total number of hymns in each deity collection. For each deity series, the hymns progress from longer to shorter ones, but the number of hymns per book increases. Finally, the meter too is systematically arranged from Jagati and Tristab to Anustab and Gayatri as the text progresses. In terms of substance, the nature of hymns shift from praise of deities in early books to Nasadiya Sukta with questions such as, What is the origin of the universe? Do even gods know the answer? The virtue of dana charity in society and other metaphysical issues in its hymns there are similarities between the mythology rituals and linguistics in rigveda and those found in ancient central asia iranian and hindukish afghanistan regions topic <laughs> samaveda The Samaveda Samhita consists of 1549 stanzas, taken almost entirely except for 75 mantras from the Rigveda. The Samaveda Samhita has two major parts. The first part includes four melody collections Gana, Gana and the second part three verse books Arsika. A melody in the song books corresponds to a verse in the Arsika books. Just as in the Rigveda, the early sections of Samaveda typically begin with hymns to Agni and Indra but shift to the abstract. Their meters shift also in a descending order. The songs in the later sections of the Samaveda have the least deviation from the hymns derived from the Rigveda. In the Samaveda, some of the Rigvedic verses are repeated. Including repetitions, there are a total of 1875 verses numbered in the Samaveda recension translated by Griffith. Two major recensions have survived, the Kathuma, Rinayaniya and the Jaimaniya. Its purpose was liturgical, and they were the repertoire of the Udgator or «singer» priests. Yajurveda. <laughs> <laughs> The Yajurveda Samhita consists of prose mantras. It is a compilation of ritual offering formulas that were said by a priest while an individual performed ritual actions such as those before the yajna fire. The earliest and most ancient layer of Yajurveda Samhita includes about 1,875 verses, that are distinct yet borrow and build upon the foundation of verses in Rigveda. Unlike the Samaveda which is almost entirely based on Rigveda mantras and structured as songs, the Yajurveda Samhitas are in prose and linguistically, they are different from earlier Vedic texts. The Yajurveda has been the primary source of information about sacrifices during Vedic times and associated rituals. There are two major groups of texts in this Veda, the black Krishna and the white Shukla. The term, black, implies, the unarranged, motley collection, of verses in Yajurveda, in contrast to the, white, well-arranged, Yajurveda. The white Yajurveda separates the Samhita from its Brahmana the Shatapatha Brahmana, the black Yajurveda intersperses the Samhita with Brahmana commentary. Of the Black Yajurveda, texts from four major schools have survived Maitrayani, Katha, Kapisthala Katha, Taittiriya, while of the White Yajurveda, two Kanva and Madhyandina. 
The youngest layer of Yajurveda text is not related to rituals nor sacrifice, it includes the largest collection of primary Upanishads, influential to various schools of Hindu philosophy. Atharvaveda The Artharvaveda Samhita is the text, belonging to the Atharvan and Anjurasa poets. It has about 760 hymns, and about 160 of the hymns are in common with the Rigveda. Most of the verses are metrical, but some sections are in prose. Two different versions of the text, the Pipalada and the Sanakya, have survived into the modern times. The Atharvaveda was not considered as a Veda in the Vedic era, and was accepted as a Veda in late 1st millennium BCE. It was compiled last, probably around 900 BCE, although some of its material may go back to the time of the Rigveda, or earlier. The Atharvaveda is sometimes called the Veda of magical formulas, an epithet declared to be incorrect by other scholars. The Samhita layer of the text likely represents a developing 2nd millennium BCE tradition of magico religious rites to address superstitious anxiety, spells to remove maladies believed to be caused by demons, and herbs and nature derived potions as medicine. The text, states Kenneth Zeisk, is one of oldest surviving record of the evolutionary practices in religious medicine and reveals the "...earliest forms of folk healing of Indo-European antiquity." Many books of the Atharvaveda Samhita are dedicated to rituals without magic, such as to philosophical speculations and to theosophy. The Atharva Veda has been a primary source for information about Vedic culture, the customs and beliefs, the aspirations and frustrations of everyday Vedic life, as well as those associated with kings and governance. The text also includes hymns dealing with the two major rituals of passage, marriage and cremation. The Atharva Veda also dedicates significant portion of the text asking the meaning of a ritual. <inaudible> <inaudible> Embedded Vedic texts <inaudible> Brahmanas The Brahmanas are commentaries, explanation of proper methods and meaning of Vedic Samhita rituals in the four Vedas. They also incorporate myths, legends and in some cases philosophy. Each regional Vedic shaka school has its own operating manual like Brahmana text, most of which have been lost. A total of 19 Brahmana texts have survived into modern times, two associated with the Rigveda, six with the Yajurveda, ten with the Samaveda and one with the Atharvaveda. The oldest dated to about 900 BCE, while the youngest Brahmanas such as the Shatapatha Brahmana, were complete by about 700 BCE. According to Jan Gonda, the final codification of the Brahmanas took place in pre-Buddhist times ca. 600 BCE. .The substance of the Brahmana text varies with each Veda. For example, the first chapter of the Chandogya Brahmana, one of the oldest Brahmanas, includes eight ritual suktas hymns for the ceremony of marriage and rituals at the birth of a child. The first hymn is a recitation that accompanies offering a yajna oblation to Agni fire on the occasion of a marriage, and the hymn prays for prosperity of the couple getting married. The second hymn wishes for their long life, kind relatives, and a numerous progeny. The third hymn is a mutual marriage pledge, between the bride and groom, by which the two bind themselves to each other. The sixth through last hymns of the first chapter in Chandogya Brahmana are ritual celebrations on the birth of a child and wishes for health, wealth, and prosperity with a profusion of cows and artha. However, these verses are incomplete expositions, and their complete context emerges only with the Samhita layer of text. Topic. 
Aranyakas and Upanishads The Aranyakas layer of the Vedas include rituals, discussion of symbolic meta rituals, as well as philosophical speculations. Aranyakas, however, neither are homogeneous in content nor in structure. They are a medley of instructions and ideas, and some include chapters of Upanishads within them. Two theories have been proposed on the origin of the word Aranyakas. One theory holds that these texts were meant to be studied in a forest, while the other holds that the name came from these being the manuals of allegorical interpretation of sacrifices, for those in Vanaprastha retired, forest dwelling stage of their life. According to the historic age based ashrama system of human life, the Upanishads reflect the last composed layer of texts in the Vedas. They are commonly referred to as Vedanta, variously interpreted to mean either the last chapters, parts of the Vedas, or the object, the highest purpose of the Veda. The concepts of Brahman ultimate reality and Atman soul, self are central ideas in all the Upanishads, and know your Atman, their thematic focus. The Upanishads are the foundation of Hindu philosophical thought and its diverse traditions. Of the Vedic corpus, they alone are widely known, and the central ideas of the Upanishads have influenced the diverse traditions of Hinduism. Aranyakas are sometimes identified as Karma Kanda, ritualistic section, while the Upanishads are identified as Jnana Kanda, spirituality section. In an alternate classification, the early part of Vedas are called Samhitas and the commentary are called the Brahmanas which together are identified as the ceremonial Karma Kanda, while Aranyakas and Upanishads are referred to as the Jnana Kanda. <laughs> Post-Vedic literature Topic. Vedanga The Vedangas developed towards the end of the Vedic period, around or after the middle of the first millennium BCE. These auxiliary fields of Vedic studies emerged because the language of the Vedas, composed centuries earlier, became too archaic to the people of that time. The Vedangas were sciences that focused on helping understand and interpret the Vedas that had been composed many centuries earlier. The six subjects of Vedanga are phonetics, siksa, poetic meter, chandas, grammar, vyakarana, etymology and linguistics, nirukta, rituals and rites of passage, kalpa, time keeping and astronomy. Jyotisa. Vedangas developed as ancillary studies for the Vedas, but its insights into meters, structure of sound and language, grammar, linguistic analysis and other subjects influenced post-Vedic studies, arts, culture and various schools of Hindu philosophy. The Kalpa Vedanga studies, for example, gave rise to the Dharma Sutras, which later expanded into Dharma Shastras. Parisista. Parisista supplement, appendix, is the term applied to various ancillary works of Vedic literature, dealing mainly with details of ritual and elaborations of the texts logically and chronologically prior to them, the Samhitas, Brahmanas, Aranyakas and Sutras. Naturally classified with the Veda to which each pertains, Parisista works exist for each of the four Vedas. However, only the literature associated with the Atharvaveda is extensive. The Asvalayana Griya Parisista is a very late text associated with the Rigveda canon. The Gobila Griya Parisista is a short metrical text of two chapters, with 113 and 95 verses respectively. The Katiya Parisistas, ascribed to Katyayana, consist of 18 works enumerated self-referentially in the fifth of the series the and the Katyayana Srauta Sutra Parisista. 
The Kursna Yajurveda has three Parisistas the Apastamba Hotra Parisista, which is also found as the second prasna of the Satyasada Srauta Sutra, the Varaha Srauta Sutra Parisista. For the Atharvaveda, there are 79 works, collected as 72 distinctly named Parisistas. Upaveda The term Upaveda applied knowledge", is used in traditional literature to designate the subjects of certain technical works. Lists of what subjects are included in this class differ among sources. The Karanavyuha mentions four Upavedas Archery Donarveda, associated with the Yajurveda Architecture Stipatyaveda, associated with the Atharvaveda Music and sacred dance Gandharvaveda, associated with the Samaveda Medicine Ayurveda, associated with either the Rigveda or the Atharvaveda. Topic Fifth and other Vedas. Some post-Vedic texts, including the Mahabharata, the Natyasastra, and certain Puranas, refer to themselves as the Fifth Veda. The earliest reference to such a Fifth Veda is found in the Chandogya Upanishad in hymn 7.1.2. Let drama and dance Natya, Natya be the fifth Vedic scripture. Combined with an epic story, tending to virtue, wealth, joy and spiritual freedom, it must contain the significance of every scripture, and forward every art. Thus, from all the Vedas, Brahma framed the Natya Veda. From the Rig Veda he drew forth the words, from the Sama Veda the melody, from the Yajur Veda gesture, and from the Atharva Veda the sentiment. Divya Prabandha, for example Tiruvimoli, is a term for canonical Tamil texts considered as vernacular Veda by some South Indian Hindus, other texts such as the Bhagavad Gita or the Vedanta Sutras are considered Shruti or Vedic by some Hindu denominations but not universally within Hinduism. The Bhakti movement, and Gaudiya Vaishnavism in particular extended the term Veda to include the Sanskrit epics and Vaishnavite devotional texts such as the Pankaratra. <laughs> Puranas The Puranas is a vast genre of encyclopedic Indian literature about a wide range of topics particularly myths, legends and other traditional lore. Several of these texts are named after major Hindu deities such as Vishnu, Shiva and Devi. There are 18 Maha Puranas, great Puranas and 18 Upa Puranas, minor Puranas with over 400,000 verses. The Puranas have been influential in the Hindu culture. They are considered Vaidika, congruent with Vedic literature. The Bhagavata Purana has been among the most celebrated and popular text in the Puranic genre and is of non-dualistic tenor. The Puranic literature wove with the Bhakti movement in India, and both Dvaita and Advaita scholars have commented on the underlying Vedanta themes in the Maha Puranas. <laughs> <laughs> Western Indology The study of Sanskrit in the West began in the 17th century. In the early 19th century, Arthur Schopenhauer drew attention to Vedic texts, specifically the Upanishads. The importance of Vedic Sanskrit for Indo-European studies was also recognized in the early 19th century. English translations of the Samhitas were published in the later 19th century, in the Sacred Books of the East series edited by Muller between 1879 and 1910. Ralph T. H. Griffith also presented English translations of the Four Samhitas, published 1889 to 1899. Voltaire regarded Vedas to be exceptional, he remarked that, 
The Veda was the most precious gift for which the West had ever been indebted to the East. Rigveda manuscripts were selected for inscription in UNESCO's Memory of the World Register in 2007. See also Hindu philosophy Historical Vedic religion Pyramid texts Shaka Vedic chant equals equals notes <laughs>